Hello everybody. So there are a number of reasons why crocodile oil is traditionally used to make Ivimbela. In this video, I will discuss some of those reasons. Crocodile oil is one of the most sought out reptilian oils in the South African traditional medicine market. This type of oil is not just used and sold in South African traditional medicine, but it's also used in the Chinese, Egyptian, and Southeast Asian traditional medicine. So crocodile farming is a practice in most countries. Thailand, for example, has the largest crocodile industry in the world. The most famous fashion brands source crocodile skin from Thailand. The main purpose of crocodile farming is to produce and export luxury leather products. The skin can also be used to make anesthetic substances. So by burning the skin to ash, you can mix it with vinegar to make an anesthetic. The meat is eaten by humans as a source of protein. The blood is either discarded or it can be used to make pharmaceutical products. For example, the blood is boiled and then used to cure chronic cough, lumbago, and sciatica. The bones are either discarded or used to make jewelry. They are also used in osteomancy by Izangoma Iskritama Tambo or bone casting diviners. The crocodile teeth are used to make an amulet that is worn on the right arm for protection. The animal fat is either thrown away, used as biodiesel, or used to produce crocodile oil. Crocodile oil is extracted from the crocodile's fat cells or fatty tissue. The fat is regarded as a byproduct that is collected during the preparation of crocodile meat. So a single crocodile produces between 600 and 800 grams of fat. The fat contains saturated and unsaturated fatty acids, including omega-3, omega-6, and omega-9. It is said that crocodile oil is so similar to human skin that it is highly unlikely to cause any type of allergic reaction when applied on human skin. And this is probably the first and main reason why crocodile oil is used to make Ivimbela. But crocodile oil is not just used to make Ivimbela. Crocodile oil is used to make many, many, many traditional ointments all over the world, not just in South Africa. So what exactly is a crocodile? A crocodile is a large lizard-like semi-aquatic reptile. It has rough and scaly skin, four short legs, and a long muscular tail. There are different types of crocodiles, with true crocodiles being those that belong to the crocodilidae family in the crocodila order. The crocodila order consists largely of predatory semi-aquatic reptiles that belong to three families. So the first family is the Alligatoridae family, which consists of alligators and caiman. Or caiman are alligatorids. The second family is the Cavialidae family, which consists of the Gariels. The gariels are crocodiles that mainly eat fish, so they're pescatarian crocodiles. The third family is the Crocodilidae family, which consists of the true crocodiles. So when you say something is a crocodile, that means it belongs to this family. The Crocodilus niloticus, also known as the Nile crocodile, I'll just refer to it as the Nile crocodile since it's easier to pronounce. The Nile crocodile is the main crocodile species that naturally occurs in South Africa. It is a true crocodile, meaning it belongs to the Crocodilidae family. So a little about this crocodile is that it can be found throughout South Africa in rivers, freshwater, marshes, and swamps. It averages about 5 to 6 meters in length. According to the Kruger National Park website, 
six meter long Nile crocodiles are very rare in South Africa, meaning you'll never find anything longer than five meters. When young, crocodiles eat fish, amphibians, and other reptiles. For an adult crocodile, its diet can also include large vertebrates like buffaloes and hippos, depending on where they are in South Africa. So enough about crocodiles, let's come back to traditional medicine. So in the traditional medicine market, the price of crocodile parts varies depending on the freshness of the parts. So the fresher the parts, the more expensive the parts. This video will not look at how the other parts of the crocodile are used in traditional medicine. This video will only go into details and look at crocodile oil and how it is used in traditional medicine. Maybe later I'll do videos looking at how the different parts of the crocodile are also used in traditional medicine. So due to the high demand of the various parts of the crocodile, especially the skin, and the fact that to extract these parts, almost all the parts actually, the crocodile must die or must first be killed. Its conservation status is listed as vulnerable in South Africa. So as mentioned earlier, crocodile is one of the most sought after reptilian oils in traditional medicine. It is reddish in color, but I've seen different colors as well. I don't know whether the difference in colors was due to processing or the differences in chemical composition, as I'll mention in just a bit, but the color is typically reddish. The oil is rich in monosaturated and polysaturated fats. However, the concentration of the fatty acids depend on the crocodile's diet. For example, crocodiles that have a fish-based diet will generally have higher amounts of fatty acids than crocodiles that eat a beef-based diet. The oil has a number of properties that make it a valuable cosmetic and medicinal product, including antimicrobial activities that are effective against bacteria such as Klebsiella pneumonia and Staphylococcus aureus. It also has antifungal activities that make it effective against fungal infections such as Candida albicans. It has anti-inflammatory activities that make it effective when applied on the surface of the body, especially the skin. It has wound healing activities that speed up the rate of wound healing and reduces scar formation in the body. It has anti-aging activities that increase skin elasticity. Crocodile oil can promote skin regeneration and collagen deposition. The oil also has the ability to hydrate the skin and decrease scaliness. Crocodile oil as well as the products made using the oil have a high economic, cosmeceutical and medicinal value. I'll mostly focus on the medicinal value. So in traditional medicine, the oil is used as an ointment for treating various types of burns, namely fire burns, steam burns, and hot water burns. I don't know if it works on nitrogen burns. I've never seen anybody with nitrogen burns, so I wouldn't actually know. I did mention in the Vimbella application video that crocodile is... Crocodile oil is one of the ingredients used in making Vimbela. Vimbela is not just a commercial traditional medicine product. There are many different ways of making Vimbela. Depending on where you are in South Africa, if you go to a traditional healer, they might use things like Ubu Vimba or Mbata Mbata. The scientific name is Watania somifera. And they'll ground like the roots of that plant and then mix it with crocodile oil and then that will be even better. Sometimes they don't use crocodile oil, they might use uh, python oil. So crocodile oil is also used with umvumvu or uvuvu, which is scientifically known as Saltis Africana. And in this case, it's not used like as an ointment it's used more 
on the wood. So some people use abafana or isn't guzezulu, which they will take out if there's like a storm outside to protect the home against lightning. So to make this indugu or abafana, you take the stick of saltus africana and then you anoint it with the crocodile oil. And that stick is then used as a protection charm against lightning. The saltus africana stick is not the only one that's used as a protection charm against lightning. You can also use umkalo tea which is scientifically known as Strachinus decusanta. You can also use Iminza, which is Hilaria lucida. All these can be used to make charms against lightning or protection charms against lightning. The crocodile oil can also be mixed with the powdered bark of Umlangwenya, which is scientifically known as Cryptocaria latifolia to treat pulmonary infections such as asthma, a cough, or emphysema. You can also use it on flu. The oil is also used to treat the symptoms of impondulu. I did write an article on impondulu. I'll link it in the description below. It was actually supposed to be a video because someone sent me an email asking if I can do a video, but I didn't have time, so I just wrote the article. The crocodile oil is also mixed with isizimane, which is Euclea natalensis, and this is uh, the mixture is made into a paste that is applied topically on like ulcers, but these are like painless ulcers, as well as on abnormal growth. The oil is also applied on the body, more especially like the legs, if you have pain, cramps, or stiffness. You basically use it like you would rub rub, but it doesn't have the terrible smell of rub rub. I used to use rub rub on my grandmother's legs when I was still in primary school and I can still remember the bad smell. The crocodile oil is rubbed on the scalp. If you are bald, or if you don't have hair, you can rub the oil to encourage hair growth. It is also applied on the abdominal wounds of women that have had cesarean section birth. The oil is also rubbed on joints to treat pain. The crocodile oil can also be mixed with poppy seeds and used to treat bites from venomous animals like snake bites. In Thailand, the oil is used to make lip balm to treat sores. The oil is mixed with things like menthol, wintergreen oil, oniol, and camphor, and then applied as lip balm. In other countries, the oil is used to make various lotions and ointments. It's also used to make herbal massage oils. For example, crocodile massage oils can be prepared using virgin coconut oil as the carrier oil. It's also used in leather tanning, which is surprising. But in general, the oil is used in a number of dermatological or skin-related issues. So if you have freckles, like the small brownish spots on the skin, the oil can be used to dim or fade the freckles. It can also be used to treat uneven dark spots or sunspots can be used to treat acne and pimple marks. It can be used to treat dark lines, wrinkles, and laugh lines on the face. It helps prevent skin discoloration. It is used to manage skin rash and dryness. Crocodile oil has the 
ability to make skin softer, brighter, and generally more attractive. It's also used to treat ulcers, as I've mentioned earlier, like painless ulcers. And there are claims that the oil can be used to treat skin cancer as well. A fun fact that most people don't know about crocodiles is that the town Sabi, Sabi is like a forestry town in Bumalang, actually got its name from the fact that the local people that were living there at the time used to be very fearful or afraid of the local river known now as the Sabi River because it was full of the Nile crocodiles. So the river used to be called Ulusaba, but I think it's supposed to be Ugusaba because it was Swati people, so that's Nguni for to be prideful. Anyways, the early Africana settlers or the early African settlers changed the name from Ulusaba to Sabi. So that's an interesting fact about how crocodiles influenced the names of towns. So anyways, thank you for listening. You can get the article on crocodile oil on the mtsn2.co.za website. Stay blessed and bye.